Good morning, welcome to the shed. Um, so today we're going to be uh, hopefully finishing off our draftsman's lamp. Um, in the first part, which if you haven't watched it, you should watch that first, I'll link here. No, I think it's here. Um, I'll link to that there. In the first part, we opened it up and had a look inside. It is an American lamp, so uh, it's 110 volt. I'm gonna switch it over to 240. We're going to remove the two ballasts that are in here and replace it with uh, one that I've purchased. So I was going to use uh, LED tubes. I've, I've been switching between different ideas, uh, but I decided to go for LED because I found some tubes that you can uh, just basically wire up direct to 240 volts and they include the ballast in the tubes. Unfortunately, I can't get hold of those anymore, so I am now going with uh, the sort of more traditional method which is to use a ballast. This is an Osram and this will drive two lamps. It's quite an easy configuration. I'll put a little uh, circuit diagram for you to have a look at. Um, yeah, so we should be able to use that to drive the two lamps. The problem is that they're 18 inch and that's a, a bit of a sort of defunct size now. Not many people are doing those. At the end of part one um, I was explaining that I wasn't sure about the switch wiring um, and I've I've had my multimeter on there and worked out that actually the switch is a two two part switch so you press it once to turn it on you push a bit further and that basically starts the lamps by giving them an extra burst of voltage which um, in the modern lamps bearing in mind this one's from the 50s or or 60s in the modern lamps you don't need to do that you have either a, a starter built into your ballast which is what this has got or one of those little uh, lock-in ones um, that does that job for you yeah, it should be quite an easy job to wire these up. Um, I think they're in parallel. I couldn't quite work it out, but I think it's a parallel circuit. Must be, mustn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, so this does the job for you, splits the power and uh, drives both lamps. Okay. The other problem I've got is the thickness of this is about two centimeters. And really the space that I've got in here is only about one centimeter, but I've worked it out that with a bit of squeezing, it should fit in this angle piece here it might push these out a little bit. Hopefully I won't have to trim any of the uh, metal, but it uh, should be okay. So the first job is to remove the bottom, uh, take out the ballasts, the existing old ones that are, are broken, um, and pass the wiring straight through to the top, because the ballast is now going to be mounted in the top rather than in the bottom. Okay, so these are the two ballasts which we've got to remove. So we have power coming in here and an earth going to the casing there so that we will leave that in place. Uh, the ballasts, and we can take these off. I think these just twist off. This is an American kind of thing and it seems to work pretty good actually. I shall be soldering the wires, I think, just for my own safety. Okay, that's the two ballasts removed. Let's have a look, see what we've got. So we've got two wires going up to the top. We're only gonna need one of those. Uh, actually, yeah, we're gonna need one of those, but I'm gonna re rewire that one and solder it as well. So I will also leave that one in place, one of the dead wires, rather than pull it out, I think. I'll need my uh, multimeter on that. I was struggling with my soldering and then I watched a video about uh, tinning the end of your soldering iron, because I, I was just giving it a quick wipe. I didn't realize that there was a process you needed to go through to really get it working well. And ever since I've been doing that, my soldering has improved vastly. Basically, you just uh, drop some uh, solder on there, wipe it off, repeat. And 
you get a nice tinned tip without any gunk on it. Okay, so the one that we need to do, this is the live. I'm just doing this just as a backup, it doesn't really need it. But. Okay, that is soldered. And then we're going to take one of these wires that currently goes up through the through the stem. I need my wire cutters just to trim that bit. We'll just pick any one, doesn't really matter which one. Solder that. Okay, cap those off. And I am going to remove this one once I've determined which one's the right one to remove. But for now, I think I'll just clip it and cap it. Okay, that's the bottom done. So we have got, uh, just to test the wires, uh, well I can do that through the plug. I can put the bottom back on again, clamp it up, and then we can work at the top end. that casing. Hopefully you can hear me all right. The wind is picking up outside. Got a big storm coming tonight apparently. So I need to try and compare this wiring to the wiring that I've got. So I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to have to at least disconnect these two here. And then I've got to blank off the one that I don't need. I've no idea how these fittings work. So I have wired up the ballast, I've got power coming in um, through sorry, this one here, across the switch and then I've also used that spare cable as an extra earth just to keep everyone happy. As you can see space is tight, I've also had a bit of a problem trying to get these ends off, I managed to get one away but there's some kind of gear mechanism, a little ratchet mechanism, and I don't know how to release it, so I might have to go Google that. Um, but yeah, going so f okay so far, I shall just, uh, I'm going to probably just tack that in with a bit of um, hot glue just to hold it in place while I do the work on it, and then I'll just tie wrap these nice and tightly. Okay, I'm not showing you every bit of wiring because I'm making it up as I go along, or working it out as I go along more, more like. Uh, okay, let's do the next bit. I had a bit of trouble getting these uh, fittings apart, so a quick U YouTube search. Apparently, if you just wiggle them as you pull, they will eventually come out. Hey! Okay. Right, let's start to wire the lamps in. It's a really good idea not to tip hot glue on your hands. The amount of times I've done that, you wouldn't believe it. It bloody hurts. Luckily I had a wet sponge handy. Just holding that in position just to let the glue set. I've also added some glue along the top of that terminal there because I was a bit worried in time it might work its way through this insulator. There you go. Okay. I've stripped all the wires, or taken all the wires out, refitted uh, the fittings, because uh, I think that'll be easier for me to lay the wiring out with those, get the right length of wire. Okay, so 
According to this circuit, I'm going to call this one lamp 1, this one lamp 2, starting from the top. Uh, and so this end, well, this is tricky, isn't it? Okay, so these two at this end are chained together across here, and one wire is run from 21, this point here, all the way to this point here. So let's put that bridge across first and then run the wire along. I hope I've got some long enough wires. I've run the power from uh, the ballast to this end of the lamp fitting. I've got to put a bridge across there and then wire these ends into there as well. So that's the next stage. Going quite well so far. I am a little bit worried about the amount of room I'm going to have, but we'll have to make it fit. So that's the top end wiring done. Pretty sure I've got that correct. I'm going to just double bubble check it and uh, tidy up my wiring, fit it all back together. Then we're going to have a big switch on. Scary times. Okay, it is time. I've double checked, triple checked my wiring. The lamp is currently switched off. Uh, I'm going to put the bulbs in. I think I managed to get the uh, casing in there. It's it's a bit squeezed, and one of the lamps is slightly raised, but I think it'll be okay once it's in position. I don't know, you probably can't see that. Okay, let's get these bulbs in and switch her on. I don't see why it shouldn't work. One. Two lamps in position. Let's plug her in. Okay. Three, two, one. Yay! She works. Nice. I was hoping it would sort of flicker and flash before I turned it on, but look at that. Lovely. One of the bulbs needs just settling in a bit. There you go. Really happy with that. That's going on my desk. They're going in the bin. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Uh, good success. Let me just check it still works. There you go. Lovely light. Really, really uh, good fun project. i turn that off. This. Yeah, good fun project to do. Uh, a little bit, little bit scary because, you know, it's the first time I've done proper rewiring of electrics, but actually, if you do your research and make sure you know what you're doing, it's not too bad. Uh, the only thing I'm slightly unhappy about is one of these lamps is slightly raised, but I might be able to work that in a bit better. Um, and the other thing that I'm not that happy about is how much I paid for it. So uh, I better fess up and tell you what it cost me. I paid 100 quid for this lamp, which is quite a lot, but I have seen them go for 300 quid and they don't turn up very often. So, you know, as long as I'm using it for myself, I think that's okay. On top of that, I had to pay uh, seven quid for a couple of bulbs and the ballast was 20 quid. So 127 quid all in all that's cost me. So, uh, yeah. If they're worth 300 quid, I've made a profit of 163 quid, haven't I? That's how they do it on that, uh, uh, what's it called? Sal not salvage hunters. Yeah, actually, salvage hunters, they do it. They say, yeah, this is worth this. They never see them actually sell it. Just say it's worth it. Yeah, anyone can do that. This is worth 300 quid, so I've made 163 quid profit. That'll do me. All right, that's the end of this uh, little series. Thanks very much for watching. See you soon.